the shack save happy and creative stay home and craft my name is barbara gray from clarity here in the uk and uh, and we're getting together for another hour of doodling and we're on flowers today so come on in i hope that you're there let's see if i'm on my own i know that stuart's in the building with us and he'll be happy to answer any of your questions the reason that paul's not with us is because at this very moment he's going live on create and craft tv so if you are a an avid parcher and you want to have a look at the um the magnificent grids that are um, being showcased by paul on create and craft i won't take it personally if you pop over there to have a look now let me just see good morning good morning Is it my new glasses or is it your predictive texting? <laughs> Come on in. Let's have a look. We've got some lovely things to show you today. And um, I was a bit of a scramble this morning. Let's get everybody in the building first. I was scrambling. I woke up scrambling because I've got a lot to do today. And, uh, and I started to panic. I was getting really angsty. Here they come. Restart device. Oh, I don't know what any of that means. I'm just going to let that go. Good morning, everybody. There they are. Yeah, and I woke up all angsty because I've got a list as long as this arm of things to do today. And, uh, and then it occurred to me, hang on a minute, I'm hanging out with my friends in the shack. And rather than adding it to the list, I decided to make it my regroup and, um, and calm down, you know, pump the brakes a bit, calm down, slow down, you know, all that good stuff, kick back. <laughs> that's the trouble life has never been busier love the cup love the cup maggie craner a gift from maggie when she came on the retreats in the summer good morning liebe marion grüß dich und danke für die wunderschöne karte that said good morning marion how uh, how are you and thank you for the wonderful card that you sent me there we go. So that was a quick do Google Translate for you. Yeah, got to calm down a little bit. It's okay though. It's it's the way it is. Um, so let me see. Last time we got together, which wasn't on Monday, if I'm, let me think for a minute. Was it Monday? I'm losing track of time. Were we together on Monday? It feels like we might have been, but I feel like, no, we didn't do Monday. Nine, nine. I haven't seen you for a week. Well, we did snowdrops last time we got together. I know that. So thank you for the wonderful artwork on Clarity Worldwide. You're so good, you know. You're getting so good. Well, we all are, aren't we? I mean, we've been doing this for a couple of years now. Let's have a look where this journey started, where we're going, you know, because we've got a fourth flower that we want to prepare. So let's just take a look. I'm, I haven't checked the cameras. Oh yeah, perfect. Our Jim did this for me. So you can see here, this is where we started. That's very close. Let's pan out a little tiny bit so that we can just, there you go. Let's pan out a little bit. And then we can always come back in again more when we're, when we're doodling. Sound is good, says Stuart. Right, so we doodled the tulip, didn't we? That was nice. Black, black cards. Black cards are always very dramatic. Let me just, black cards. Doesn't that look cool, right? And you know the expression to gut a card? If, for example, you wanted to layer it up. I, I do think that layering on card does add uh, class. It adds a little bit of, um, yeah, quality to the card. And um, But if you had a die, for example, that cut out the middle, this piece here, you would what we call gut the card, and then this piece that you take away, of course, becomes useful as another another frame for a smaller piece, for example. You know, so this is a six by six scored, but not folded. We sell them like this. We sell we sell white ones, black ones, and buff ones, all in different sizes. The reason I'm going into this is because beginning tomorrow, there's a weekend sale 
on paper. So if you're thinking, oh, I think I'll buy myself a pack of six by six or seven by seven, right? black school but folded, school but not folded cards, wait, wait until tomorrow. And if you're a club member, definitely wait till tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow lunchtime, all the designer papers, the petite toppers, all those things are all on sale at a very unbeatable price. So, so when I say, oh, this looks like a Friday thing, right, you know what I mean, because there's lots of it. Um, the 7 by 7 essential card looks like a Friday thing. Now, let's go back to this. So this is a five by five. And we did the tulip. Let's get back to the doodling. So we did the tulip. And then after the tulip, we did the rose. And then with the rose, we introduced our mica powders. Do you remember the gold, the silver, and the pearl? These three. Hang on, let me get my little box of tricks out. One, two, three. Right? And we started using the pearl over the top of a really nice pink color. And that's how we did that. Then, last time we got together, we did our snowdrops. Really nice. This is where I'm going to pick up on with the snowdrops. And we used our pearls and our blues. And the gold with the blue made that wonderful green. And you'll see, if I hold it up, you can see the luster. Can you see that? There you go. Lots more room for play there. But I thought today, I thought we've got two things I want to do. One, I suggested that we come up with a quote or something for here. So I want to do that, right? And then, and then, drum roll. Where is it though? I've got a list here. Hang on. So snowdrops first while you're getting your bits. And what you need for this job now, if you have, right, is some tracing paper tracing paper and a pencil please and micron pens okay those are the things that we're going for to, to to make the quote I'm going to show you how to how to draw it how to center it how to make it lovely without bodging your work right and then drum roll again right we're going to go for what a day for a dahlia I'm not allowed to sing, but I'm going, ah, da, 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 da. Do you remember Bobby Darren? Bobby Darren. I was only a little girl. And that song still, still, come on, 1966, I was a little nipper. But you remember that one, don't you? What a day for a day, dreamy. What a day for a dahlia, we're going to call it. Yesterday, I said to Dave, what rhymes with dahlia? He goes, failure. I said, we can't. I said, I can't write a poem about a failure. He said, what else rhymes with Dahlia? So we started singing instead. And then we came in, us and Jilly, Dave said to Jilly, what rhymes with Dahlia? Guess what she said? Failure. <laughs> Honestly. So we're going to do what a day for a Dahlia. Okay. It's a really, it looks difficult, but it's really easy. We'll do it together. All right. So Dahlias are on the cards today. They are on the menu. And what we're going to do is start the whole doodle gig today by putting a verse in here. So, did you find a verse? That's the first thing. Did you find something? I did. I found a nice one. And I thought, it's nice and small. You know, you don't want it. You don't want like the Dead Sea Scrolls. You've only got a little box here, haven't you? Okay, so you want a nice, short, succinct, hits the spot every time little quote. Okay. So I came up with hope is a snowdrop, which is nice, isn't it? Hope is a snowdrop. The snowdrop, it symbolizes rebirth, doesn't it? The beginning of the new year. It's when the little flower pops its head through the snow and says, and here we go again. <laughs> here we go again. Take it from the top. All right. So hope is a snowdrop. That's what we're going to put in to our little box. Are you cool with this? Good. I'll tell you another thing that's worth pointing out as well, right? On the snowdrops, you see the silver? That's the pearl. Pat, this is the pearl. It's very really good. Honestly, if you haven't treated yourself yet, do. In here, there's a set of 12 
polychromos. This blue here, it's called sky blue. Okay. This is the pack with the greys for the drop shadows and that. But the sky blue, see, if you, you can go over the top of the pearl and you can add shadow, right? And it just is, it's a blue. If you want to make something white, like proper white, add blue to it. And you'll find that that does, that hits the spot every time. And the other thing is, like for shadow, if you want to put the blue over the top of the green that we created with the gold, it makes a really nice luster too. Now, if you want to make shadows, as in drop shadows, I would go with the light grey. I'd go with this grey here. What's just this one? Cold grey three, that'll do. See, so if you wanted to make a drop shadow, then the drop shadow is going to come in under here. Okay, definitely. Gently does it. You can always add it. These are such delicate flowers. You really don't want to make a great big dark grey drop shadow. Just a tiny little accent. See how it just changes it? Look, in we go here, like that. And it will change it. It will give it depth. Look, just, just like that. Okay? And you can come out further. And all you've got to do is just take the pressure off your... Take the pressure off the pencil. There you go. I'm, I'm hardly touching the pen, the paper, the card. Stencil card. Tomorrow, Friday, noon. These are essentials, you know. If you're into doodling, this is this is the time to stock up, really. There. Nice. So, um, I just wanted to show you the finishing tricks for the for the colours and where I'm getting my my pencils from there. Now, let's have a look at this. Hope is a snowdrop. So I've written it on there. I thought, yeah, I like that. But how do I get it to there? Let me show you a trick. Take your tracing paper, a piece of tracing paper, right? Put that on there like that. Then take your pencil, just a bog standard HB pencil. And then let's, let's try it. This is just a piece of, you know, this is, this is your template. Okay, so for example, hope is, I've already done it once, look, I've done it in this corner, so I know it works, look, there, like so. Looks good, I like it, I might, I think hope is, in, see, and I can move it over, so if I want to put hope there and is there, then the snowdrop needs to move over a little bit, do you see what I mean? So let's go again. I'm going to put hope in the centre, hope. Right, one of the things that, about lettering, I find, right, if you're doing an H, these are just simple little things. If you do an H, you, you'd be tempted to put the, the crossbar there. Shall I come in a bit tighter? Let's have a look. Just show you a couple of different variations on a theme here. You, you'd want to put the crossbar there like a rugby post, see? But if you lift, if you, if you put it up a bit higher, it just looks better, right? O, air draw. P, again, you're coming across here like that, you see, P, and then E, again, air draw until you're happy, and it's going to come at the same, see, so you can, you can dictate, if, you, if the line is here, the P needs to come to here, and then it can come down a bit further, so what, wherever your bar is here, make that your, your, your thread, if you see, right? You get it so wherever this is thread it through okay hope is a snowdrop so let's write hope is a snowdrop because we got to get to what a day for a dahlia we got to get to the dahlia now hope so it's you want to center it always start in the middle and work your way outwards right so o p o p That'll do. H. E. Okay. Want to use a ruler? Use a ruler. If you feel more comfortable making a line so that you know that you're on, you're on the right level, you can always make a line. 
you know, sometimes I think you don't want to overthink it. I think if you get too... But the line's good. There you go. So hope. Good size. Bar thread works. Is a snowdrop. See, it's bigger this time. I've gone bigger. It's up to me. Up to you. There you go. Hope. Hope is a snowdrop. And now we're going to go, is a, is a, just sans serif. In other words, no curls, right? Just straightforward, like a Helvetica, like that. That'll do. Is a, and then snowdrop, vroom, right? So we're going to air draw, air, air draw so that we can see that it's going to fit. Snow, really lightly. That looks lovely. So we've got a nice big S, snow. Stay down, keep going, don't come up for air. That looks pretty, doesn't it? Right? So I've got a big S, now I can get bolder. Snow, and I don't have to come up for air, I can keep going. There, snowdrop. Okay? And as I come up for it, there you go, go again. And if I want to spread it out, I think that looks quite nice. I'm not sure about this little bit flourish though, as to make it balanced, you see. But you can you get the drift, right? And then hope goes there. Snowdrop is there. This might move over a bit, don't you think? Is a moves over a bit. Bingo. Hope is a snowdrop. So I've got that in the right place. Or you can try a different style. This is a bit smaller. Looks a bit more delicate. So I've shown you how it works. Yeah, and I've decided I want to go a number smaller. But you get the picture. There you go. So my hope is in there. Hope is a snowdrop. So in order to transfer this, right, I need to turn it over, don't I? So I'm going to turn it over. Cool, we haven't done any tracing paperwork for quite a while. Right, hope. Let's just get it in the right place. So what we're doing now is putting the ink on the side for the transfer. So if you, if you think that you want to move it, now's the, now's the time to move it. So let's have a look. Snow. Well, I'm all right with this. Of course, it's quite hard to draw this backwards. That's okay, though. R. Gives me something to work on. Right, S snowdrop. I'm not sure about where I've put these. Is a. I might move these over a little bit, like that. Definitely. Right. So now I've got my, my words in. Are we cool with this? You just spilt coffee on your snowdrops. No, Pauline. That's frustrating. Right. Hope is a snowdrop. Doesn't that look lovely? So once you're happy with the placing of it, then what about putting, there you go, make sure it's in the right place. You could always put it down so it doesn't shuffle while you work. Shuffle while you work, right? You do that. Low tack masking tape. Friday. <laughs> yeah, because you've got designer papers, you've got designer petite toppers, you've got all that good gear. You need this. Definitely. Stuart, you on it? Good. So this is a Stuart and Barbie job, this one. Right. H O P E. Just get the rough idea of where you're going. That won't happen. Right. Is a. You know, we were talking the other day. I remember we were talking about. Um, Beautiful words, you know, and how words evoke different emotions. I like that. And uh, and snowdrop is one of those words. Do you remember? We talked about it. We had um, some beautiful words, actually. Serenity and we're talking about wrens and the car parks up on the forest. And hope is another word that's really uplifting and positive because it 
it is what it is, isn't it? Hope. Right, can you see this okay? Because now we're going to pen it. I think we'll pen it. And in order to pen it, I need one of these. What have we got? An 01. That'll work. 01 is good. Let's pen it. Hope. We're not going to push hard. We're going to get our eye in. Let's just practice a moment. Okay, good. This will be good. And if we miss a bit, we're not going to go over it, all right? We're going to leave it just like that. It's sketchy. Are we happy where hope is? Well, hope's where it is now, right? Should be over that way a little bit, but it's too late now. Right, hope. Went quiet now. Hope. Dot, dot. Lovely separator. Right, hope is a good positioning snowdrop. Can barely see it, but we'll give it a go. Right, snow comes up for air. Drop. That will do, my friends. Hope is a snowdrop. Bit shaky. But it'll do. And then if I want to, I can add a little bit of glisten with the pearls, but the message is in place. We know exactly what it says, and we've definitely finished this job. Nice, huh? And when it's completely dry, I'll take my eraser, my pink, my pink rubber. There we go. When it's completely dry, and I'll take out all the pencil marks where I don't want them, really, really gently. If you press too hard with this, right, if you press too hard, it's better to just go like that. Better to put a drop shadow in than get embed pink rubber in your card, okay? Sometimes it's actually quite nice to leave the sketch marks in too. You know, they look all right. It's like, well, it's hand-drawn. It's definitely a, an original, isn't it? So there you go. We've done... Uh, tulip, we've done a rose, and now we've done a hope is a snowdrop. So, on to the dahlia. You ready? What do we need to do a dahlia? Dahlia, dahlia, not my favorite flower, but we're gonna make it really lovely. All right, dahlia. Always reminds me of Arthur Daly. <laughs> Daly. Right, are you ready? Let's have a look at this. We're going to break this down. Okay, so let's have a look at this Dahlia. Can you see that? Are we in close enough? Let me show you something. You see that? This is where we're going to start. Here, here. This is where we're going to start. Right, there. So let's take a piece of scrap and let's try it. I've already done it very, very lightly so you can see. So what you're going to do, let's give it a go. Look, it's really pretty. You can see where I'm going with this. Pretend you're going to the dentist. Make a little smile, right? Then put a couple of little teeth in, like that. Okay. Maybe a couple of little tiny ones on the side. I went to the dentist yesterday. That was not my favourite. 400 quid later. 400 pounds. I mean, you know, I can't afford 400 quid, but it's my own fault. I should have looked after them earlier on in life. Let's face it, I've only got one pair of teeth or set. Set, not pair. Upper and lower, I meant. Yeah, it's a lot of money, isn't it? The, the dentist said he was, um, what did he call himself? A traditionalist. He wanted to hang on to the ones I've got. What? Okay, we'll hang on to the ones we've got then, because they're nicey bases. But nonetheless, I should look after them better. Then I got a lesson in how to clean my teeth. At 63, I still haven't figured that one out yet. So now I know how to clean my teeth. <laughs> oh, what a gas.
Right. Yeah. So there you go. Dentist. <laughs> right? You're going to do that. And then, because you're going to build up around. See, now let's have a look at the original, because that's what you want to do. If you look, it's shorter at the top and longer at the bottom. Let's just figure that out. Right? Don't worry about that one. That one's rubbish. Right? This is the one we're aiming for. Right? So it's shorter at the, the top and longer at the bottom. But let's just get this going first. So you've got this bit. And then you're going to put the lower, the lower ones in. So these are a bit longer. Right? Look, just... You can air draw. Look, put another couple in. Just you've got to get something to get your teeth into. <laughs> so you've got to start somewhere. We're going to start there. What's nice about this, right? When you do this, you'll see at a at some point you think, oh, hang on a minute, this could be a water lily. Forget the dahlia. This could be a beautiful ballerina skirt. I mean, once you figure this out, the world's your oyster. Okay, look, so we go like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to start joining up in between. Let's just get, get a large, let's get going here. So you're going to join up in between these ones like that, right? So you're going to go, it's quite straightforward. We need a big one here and a big one on that side. These are the, look, your molars. <laughs> you turn it round, right? It's like this, isn't it? And you go, so you, you're always going in between the two like that. But because this is underneath, it's got perspective, it's got, you need a bit of perspective, right? It's, it's quite big. And if you wanted to, you could come out a bit. So it depends how far you want to come out. But let's just, for the moment, let's come around the side a little bit as well. See here, so you've got to come around the side a bit. And all you're doing is making little teeth like that, little teeth. Okay. Now start looking at the shape. Let's come above. So let's put a couple in above. These are going to be a little bit smaller though. Look, see, smaller because it's, it's not full on like that. It's not, f you know, two dimensional. This is longer at the front, shorter at the top. All right. So now let's put, let's put a couple in here at the top, a bit smaller than these ones though. That's what you've got to remember. We can lay them over like that. There we go. A bit smaller. Now let's put a couple more in. Smaller. Just keep saying smaller to yourself and it might it might actually sink in grey. Smaller. Smaller. See? So we're gonna put a couple more in. Smaller at the top. As soon as you go past the dental lip, right, you're gonna go longer. And the further you come down here, the longer they get. There you go, look. Proper. Now, let's go around the sides. Sides are a challenge. Not really. Just put another little one in. It's only a piece of scrap. It's only a bit of copy paper. That's the whole point of the shack, isn't it? Right, here we go. So we put a couple in there. See how you're building it up? You can make it tight, like a proper little pom-pom, or you can loosen it up a bit. Look at this one. Let me show you this because I'm going to go over what I've already done because at one point I thought, oh, hang on a minute, we've got a, we're working towards a, look, I'll show you. So here we go. This is really a good one, right? So the, again, larger, look, teeth, loads of teeth. There you go. And I haven't, I've not studied dahlias, really not, right? But. This is my take on them. This is what I think they look like. There. See, the thing is, though, see how attractive that is? And when you get to this one here, look. So there you go. Let's go around here. Do you see what I mean about this has got potential, this is, has, you know. This has got legs. Because this could be, if you wanted it to be, if you stopped there, that, there's a water lily if I came out further here, right, and I kept coming out this way, instead of going, look, watch. See? See how? Forget those ones. Here's your water lily pads. So instead of going taller this way, you start going longer this way. Here they are, look. Boom. And before you know it, you've got a water lily. I shouldn't have done these ones. You see what I mean? 
So you forget these ones. I'm going to cut across these now so you can see. And you start bringing in these great big water lily pads. There you go. Boom. So you're making the set. And then, of course, at the top, definitely these have got to be smaller because they're at the back of the water lily, right? So I think that that's got legs. And it's not brilliant, but the point is, if you can get the middle bit down, then you start spreading that way and down a little bit. Once we've done the dahlia, we'll focus on a water lily, because I think they're beautiful flowers as well, aren't they? A bit more cuppy, a bit more of a smile in the middle, that one. But let's do it. Back to the dahlia. What a day for a dahlia. Right. So let's keep this one in our mind, right? So you can see what I'm doing now. You just, it's, it's, it's as big as you want it to be, isn't it? Where do, where do you want to stop? So here we go. So this is quite a nice little dahlia here. Do you want it to be a little bit bigger? If you do, just put a couple more taller ones down here. Mm. Do you know what I think as well with this? This is a real exercise in, you've got to stop and look and then just start building up the shape. Do you, do, you see, do you follow? You do. You have to. You have to stop and look and decide. Do I want to put another one there? Hmm. So in the middle, you see, it's quite tiny. You could even go small in the middle, tight. But you need something to start with, and I think that's 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 the starting place. Is these bits here, because they get tinier. You can go smaller and smaller in there. So it's a, like a knot in the middle. Yeah. So that's the theory, friends, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to put this in one of our boxes again. How's that sound? And we've got a bird, we've got a bud there that's just opening, and we've got the leaves. Right, should we? Let's do it. Let's just do the job. Let's just do it. Right, we've got the theory. We know how it works. Hey, hope is a, hope is a snowdrop. That's where we started. Good. Now, let's see. And um, we need, first of all, before we do anything else, I think we'll work on a piece of our stencil card, 7x7 seven seven stencil card. Let's start on that. Because once we've inked, once we've pen, penciled the dahlia and we've inked the dahlia, then we're going to colour the, this is the beautiful, bright, vibrant colours, and we'll use our pergoliners. Friday pergoliners and um, and we'll use our, our pearl to give it that glisten. Okay, right. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is give ourselves that frame again. Let's give ourselves a frame. So, see how we're giving ourselves these, these openings, and it depends entirely how big you want it to be, how small you want it to be, you know, look, see, but on each of them, we've always, just to recap, we always give ourselves a little bit of a guideline, don't we, depending on where we want to go. So, it's a good idea just to have a very, very faint line where we're where we are and and then you can decide so what we've got going on here in my sketch for example we've got the lovely tall one again then we've got a little bud down there i and then i don't know i i'm not sure about this yet so i'm going to the, ju the jury's out on that like i say life's been a bit of a scramble recently and um and so i'm um let me just have a look. What have I done there? Yeah, three. Okay. I'm just looking at these, the lines on my purple ruler. Right. That'll do. So I'm going three, three notches in, which is going to be, is that three that I've done? No, four. So that's two centimetres. Two centimetres in. Let's just do that all the way around the outside. That'll do. That'll give me a nice, keep it small, keep it tighter. You know, otherwise it's going to be ugly. Right, that'll do. 
there you go. So I'm drawing it quite finely so that it's not difficult to erase. That's it. Then, so then we've got in between, we've got say, we've got 18. So nine's the center, isn't it? Nine's the center. So to give myself the same, see what I've done. So I've gone 18, oh, it's a centimeter ruler. So I've gone to about nine in the middle there. So I'll come up here and I'll put nine in the middle there, right, 18. And then I'm going to give myself the same border on the sides. So that's all right. It just gives me, I'm giving myself a, a, a frame. If you had a, listen, if you wanted to make a set of these, that's a bit heavy, Gray. If you wanted to make a set of these, then of course, right, and that one, the jury's out on where the gap's going to be here. It's not, we're not going to get to that. We're going, we're doing the dahlia, right? And if you wanted to make a set that were all uniformly the same, then top tip, tracing paper, you know, give yourself a template and then they're all the same. And then you just see, because what we've done is we've, We've tailored them to fit the stamps, the flowers. That's all right, too. Everyone's an original. Right, so now what we'll do is we'll put the dahlia in. And the dahlia is going to this one, one flower, right? So let's just, let's give ourselves that air drawing to start with. Just give myself a bit of a guide. That'll do. And then I'm going to come... I'm coming, that's going to be the outer rim of the, then I'm going to come down here. Then I'm going to have a leaf there, right? And a leaf here. Leaves are lovely on the dahlia. And then I'm going to put a little bud hanging over the side like that. There you go. So I've air drawn just to give myself um, a bit of um, a line to work towards. There you go, a line to work towards. And if this is my dahlia, if this is my dahlia, my alpha dahlia, right, then you can see this is not, this is up here, it's a bit further up. Do you see? So start your drawing here, put your teeth in up here. Here we go. So we'll start like that. There's the center. And then we'll start coming down. Right? I think, am I high enough there? I think I am. It's not in the middle, it's above the center, isn't it? Look. That'll do. Right, so now, this is where we're gonna learn how to look at what we're doing while we're doing it. So this is a bit bigger, down the bottom. Let's do the bottom first, that's what I think. Let's start with the bottom. And let's start spreading out our, our leaves or our petals. Leaves, what am I talking about? Right, do another one there, another one there. And they're going to start dropping down like this. There's another one, another one. Go lightly, because if you don't like it, you can always... Right, there we go. No, it's not the sound, it's Barbara concentrating. There's nothing wrong with the sound, it's me. Right, here we go. And we're going to go one more down there. Fish scales. Pine cones. Hey, you want to learn how to draw a pine cone? Check this out. And it's about, if you know what it's about, it's about looking at where you're going, isn't it? It's like, where do you want to, got to kind of stop and look at where you're going. It's good, quite a good idea to have a, a frame as well. I mean, this is living proof, right, that there are no experts in this building. And I, come on, when did I ever pretend to be an expert? Hey, No, I didn't. <laughs> did I ever, ever, ever say I'm an expert in drawing dahlias? Or even an expert in drawing. No, 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 she did not. And that's the bottom line, I think. 
There are no judges in this building and there are certainly no experts. Not on this side of the table anyway. Right now we've got the, this is going to be pretty. And then we go again. There's a couple of things we've got to figure out here. Hang on one second, right? Now we're going to go a bit smaller going to the top. Oh, let's turn it around a moment. Right, smaller, smaller. I keep saying it, Barbara, and you might actually follow your own rules. Smaller, that's it. See, we might not go as far as this. I might th say, hang on, that'll do. That'll do, donkey. Right, smaller, grey, smaller. I keep saying it. Um, see, the trick is to look at where you're going and then step back and look again. You see? So you go like that. There we go. I think so. I think this is going to work. It's quite a busy little daily, this one, isn't it? That's all right, though. What do I think? I think this is all right. Should probably be getting a bit bigger, though, Gray. <laughs> let's, go, let's get a few more larger ones in there. Just so that it looks like it's still the same flower. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, love it. Looking good. And it's a nice round. Do you like? I think that'll do. Yes. Yeah, I'll get out of the petal. That could be the long petal there, see? If you want to make a pom-pom, you know, like the blooms, then instead of making them pointed, you make them round. It's the same. I bet that would look good too. I bet instead, where's my, where's my rough one? Yeah. Here we go. So instead of, instead of doing teeth, <laughs> instead of doing teeth do circles like scallops and then the sa it's the same thing isn't it look see and then round you go and round you go and it will get you'll get you'll get a completely different looking flower but here I look well, hey see that will work as well you know won't it? But you've got to kind of come above as well. Anyway, stick to the plan, Gray. What I'm saying is dahlias are us. So I've done the dahlia. How are you doing? Have you done your dahlia? Is anybody crafting along with me? Decided that a dahlia is not a croissant. I have no idea. I can go down, but not out and round. <laughs> Come on. Right, shall we try a leaf? We'll leave the bud till last. Let's do a leaf. So the leaf, let's do it on a bit of scrap first. So the leaf is pointed, right? So we'll get a nice shape going. Very light. Do it lightly. Right, but it's, it's definitely got... Um, it's got some interest to it. So it's up, down, it's one of those leaves, all the way up. Then it comes back down, then it comes down the other side. It's a jaggedy one, like that. There we go. Right, so that's what we want to do. And then the then the veins, they're random, like that. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. Jaggedy. So we give ourselves a really light shape that you can barely see. See? Really light that you can barely see and then go jagged. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to look like a leaf, friends. Right. So here's the really light leaf. Done it already. And now I'm going to go to the tip. That's the tip there. So do I want to go? Do I like pulling? Do I think that's easier? Hmm, not sure. Let's have a think. Right, here we go. Round we go. Don't overthink it, Gray. Just go for it. 
that's that side, and then up, nice point, and then down we go that side. Lovely, and then we're going to put the spine in. There you go, that'll do. And then we'll put, let's do the other one. So it's while we're on the same track, so we're going to put a really nice point in. Hang on, I can't think where I'm going. Oh yeah, up, down, that's it. Little jagged spot, and then up to the point, and then down we come, around the other side. That will do. And then down with the middle one. Cool. So I've done that. Now we want to put our veins in. We won't overcook it with the veins. Just a few. So you go up and make a little tree. That will do. Up and then bring it over. Up and then bring it down. Whichever one works logically. That will do. That one's a bit weird. That will do. Right. And then up. I think this is the way it works. There you go. Cool, I feel a lot better now than I did half an hour ago. Right, here we are. Works every time, doesn't it? Just focusing the mind on something other than what's giving you angst. Right, now let's turn this, let's do the little bud next. I've done my, are you happy with what you've done so far? I quite like this. I like this one better. It's a bit, bit more open. But you get the idea, don't you? That'll do. When I've got more time, I may open it up a little bit. Hmm. Got options. I don't know. I like them both. Right. So let's have a look. With the bird, right, what you're going to do, make a circle, okay, but the, the, the actual base of it is a bit higher up. So you've got, you, you're going from here, right, to here, to here to here, to here, you're coming round, but at some point you're going round the back. There you go, see? And that's how you get your, your the, the illusion of a bud. So you, you put the base of the bud, not at the bottom, but a bit further up, and then you come, you draw into the bud like that. See? Bud. That works, doesn't it? Now to do it for real, for real. Right, so round this little fella comes. We'll give it a little bit of um, foliage in a minute. This is a bit big, Gray. Rather large. Right, let me make sure that I haven't got any Gray on there because this is going to make me go too large. It's a bit top heavy, this, for a, for a bud. It's a bit much. That'll do. So let's make it a bit smaller. Like that. That's better. Right, and then I'm going to put my my point, my center there, and then I'm going to start. But again, this is one of those exercises in, in looking at where you're going. See, and then we'll come round. That looks a bit weird, Gray. Like that. There you are. See, so you're coming, you're cutting into that. And then you can put a little bit down there as well. So you've got that one, that one. That's it. There. And you've cut into that. Nice. In. Then you've got your little thing overlapping. Got a stalk coming down here. There you are. Be even nicer if you put the stalk like that. There you go. So the leaves have actually coming around like that. Yeah, I like that better. Cool, that'll do. That'll do. That's it. That'll be nice when it's inked up. It should be pointing down a bit more, Gray. <laughs> it's always better than the rough. But you get the picture. It should be pointing down more. I should have put the point down here and then worked towards it. But it'll do for it'll do for today. It's serving its purpose for sure. Okay. So I've done that, done that. Now we're going to go around the outside. And again, I'm just going to go like that and then doodle. I like that. I'll stop at the leaf, come through the leaf there, little squiggle, and then get to the base. Then I'm going to come along here. Again, don't overthink it. That'll do. Uh, where do I want to put, if I want to put anything, it probably wants to be around, no, not center there. 
maybe down here. So we're just going to doodle, 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 and then come round. I'm not doing anything else other than that. There you go. That's nice. And then on the top, that'd be nice. So we come along here, doodle, doodle, little swirl, swirl going the other way, done. Right, sorted. That's that. This I will do again. Not happy with that little fella. He needs to be twisted round. It needs to be here, there, not there. But I think I pressed too hard trying to get it right, and now I'm not going to be able to correct it. I might have to do this again. Doesn't take long, though, does it, what we're doing here? Hmm? Doesn't take long. But that's definitely the basics. That's the basics of it. You got it? Nice. How are you? All right. We've got it all going on here at the moment. And my mum's not well. So when we're finished here, I am going to go over and see mum and uh, spend a few hours with her. And uh, I went to see dad yesterday. He's doing well. It's just this, isn't it? It's a balancing act at the moment. Um, it'd be all right. We'll get there. We'll get there one day at a time. And I think the thing about the one day at a time, I've always said it. It's been my mantra for as long as I can remember back. And when you say one day at a time, sometimes it just becomes like a glib, oh, one day at a time. Just take one day at a time. You know, my blog's called One Day at a Time. But, but there's a difference between, between saying it and actually living it. If you can, and I'm at the moment, I'm learning to properly live my life one day at a time. And I'm sure that somebody, one of you is going to go, right, I understand what you mean. It's one thing saying it, it's another thing actually living it. So, so today I woke up and all I've got to do today, all I've got to do today is get through today. I haven't got to worry about tomorrow, although I'm thinking about this big sale and that. But my point is that all I've got to do is do today. Hmm? I had to come in, figure out what a dahlia looks like. <laughs> Listen to Bobby Darren. What a day for a daydream. Now that put me in a good mood. Right? Talk to my friends, hang out with my friends, drink a cup of tea, sort out the sale for tomorrow. You know, talk to Paul, make sure he's okay. Done that. Pack the bags, ready to go to mum's. So I've got some treats for her. So I'm going to cheer her up. And when I've done that, I'm going to get home. Got a business meeting tonight in Seven Oaks. That's why I'm dressed like this, so that if the traffic's bad, I can go straight to Seven Oaks from Mum's. And so, and then all I've got to do is have a good day today, have the best day. I'm not worried, not thinking about tomorrow, not think because we're going away and I haven't packed and the house looks like a bomb city and the whatever la 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 la. You know, doesn't matter. Deal with that tomorrow. Today's today, and I'm living today. And I'm not going to mess my today up with worrying about what I haven't done for tomorrow. Yeah, doesn't make sense, does it? And I think we're getting caught, if you don't mind my saying so, we, as a, as a nation, as a world, are getting caught up in worrying about tomorrow. What's the end game? What's going to happen? Oh, my God. Eh, eh, eh. You know. And then before you know it, your days are just angsty and panicky and worried. You know, we've, we went through all this when we did the pandemic thing. We went through all this with COVID. We've had two years. Linda Williams, she said to me, you know, there's a new, there's a new word in the dictionary now. It's called permacrisis. Well, they don't even need to put it in the dictionary because we all know what a permacrisis is because we are living it. You know, define permacrisis. Well, Barbara's life. Judith's life, Debbie's life. It's a perma crisis. You just roll from one drama into another one. And as if that weren't enough, they sit there. It's like this little, little group of people that are called journalists. They think, oh, what can we freak them out with now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a minute. They're settling down. No, we need to terrify them again. <laughs> so we defy that and we say, 
we're crafters people we know what to do we get with our hands we may draw dodgy dahlias but we're calm we kick back we know how to stay sane do you understand me hmm? it's no point in in freaking out you know yeah 400 pound dental bill well there you go could be worse could be a lot worse probably will get worse <laughs> but for today my teeth are lovely and they don't ache and they're mine you know what i mean so you have to look on the bright side of life <laughs> have i have i freaked you out or or i know you said pissed you off have i frustrated you enough yet with my with my upbeatness it comes from a dark place but it's the only way it's the only way to move forward isn't it hey eh? and um and if we're drawing dahlias or chrysanthemums or daisies or whatever you know what rhymes with dahlia failure we are not failures and our lives are not a failure no way no way you know and we cannot have we cannot have external influences and disruptors messing with our serenity people we can't i can't and i bet you can't so and that's why we draw snowdrops and met them beautiful and we draw roses we fly in the face of perma crisis <laughs> Right, what are we doing with this dahlia? <laughs> Let's have a look. Well, I think it's getting there. I think it's lovely. We're going to ink it. This one's a bit ropey. I might have to repeat this one. <laughs> or I may just go with the flow, hey? Let's, there's nothing more perfect than nature, boo-boo. And I think, actually, I'm going to go with this. Let's have a look. I'll tell you what, can I give you some homework so I can shoot off to Medway and see my mum? <laughs> right. If you're up for it, okay, I've done the big dahlia. I've done mother dahlia. We need to do baby dahlias, okay? So how about I set you a challenge and then I'm off the hook and I can get in the car and shoot over there? Oh, I haven't even got any petrol. <clears throat> right. You, how about we make a bird like this and an open one like that yeah or make a bud and then or one like that whichever you fancy and then maybe another another expression of something about a dahlia what a day for a dahlia that'd make a lovely <laughs> what a day for a dahlia do you know what that is a stamp what a day for a dahlia what a difference a dahlia makes <laughs> Oh, that's it. Okay, it's sorted. I'm going to make a whole little set of A7 stamps, all to do with dahlias. What a day for a dahlia. What a difference a dahlia makes. Come on, I need some, I need some more ideas. Come on, give us some more ideas. And then we'll make a beautiful little A7 set of dahlia stamps, dahlia quotes. What a difference a dahlia makes. Um, you just got to take the word day and then figure it out from there. Um, come on, I'm waiting. Always look on the bright side to go out to. Yeah, fabulous. Come on, what a day for a dahlia. We got that one. What else we got? Uh, have a lovely dahlia. <laughs> what a day for a dahlia. Have a lovely dahlia. Looks like it's your dahlia. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, oh, that's going to keep me going all the way over to mum's. So let me see, what do I want to tell you? I want to tell you not to buy any card, designer paper or anything like that until tomorrow. And then I want to ask you to stock up. I want to recommend that you stock up. Uh, we're going away. We're going, yeah, Ken, Ken, you're here, aren't you? Where's Ken? Guess where we're going, Ken? Jurassic, I won't say Jurassic Park, the Jurassic Coastline. We're going down to Lyme Regis. And Dave's booked us some um, rock climbing, going to look for fossils. 
fossils. Did I did I show you? Did I actually bring in my uh, bookends that I made, my ceramic bookends? Say yes or no, because if I did, then I won't bring them again. If I didn't, I want to bring them in to show you the finished ones, the finished bookends that I did. Yes or no? I can't remember. A dahlia to remember. I love it, Stuart. A dahlia to remember. Perfect. Jazz, I hope you're listening and writing these down. A dahlia to remember. Now, let me see. Yes, you did. Thank you. So I don't need to bring them in from home again. No, you just showed them on a blog. Ah, I just showed them on a blog. All right. I'll bring them in. I'll bring them in anyway when I come back. But because we're going down to Lyme Regis for a long weekend, I know. Big event. Paul staying at the house, just in case you think the burglaring is. Um, Paul staying at the house looking after Ragnar and Eric. And um, so, so there's no point in breaking in. <laughs> and if you do, um, could you please make the beds? Because <laughs> I haven't had time. Um, what else was I going to say? Yes. So no, no shack on Monday. That's what I meant. No shack on Monday because we're going to have a long weekend off. But then on Thursday, this time next week, we're back in the shack. I'll bring me bookends and we'll finish off our dahlias. And by then, um, I will have done the boxes and I will have inked. Shall I ink them? Or we could ink them together. Let's ink them together. Shall we? Okay, good. No, yes, good. I'm bringing my bookends with me. Thank you for reminding me. I hate to think I'm repeating myself. I know I am, one day at a time. Okay. Have a lovely Thursday. Have a good weekend. Don't forget, Paul is back on Create and Craft at two o'clock. He's doing a really super thing at two o'clock with the grids. Um, because we always think of grids like these texture, beautiful pattern lace mats, you know. Um, but they're also lovely for making gorgeous borders. You don't have to go all the way around just in a straight line. Really beautiful. Um, yeah, you see, I see these grids as um I see these as really excellent, easy to use um lace mat work. You know, you can make lace frames and the mats can be completely separate to the centerpiece. You could make a dahlia. You could put a dahlia in the middle. You could have all your inners, all your centerpieces, and then make these beautiful mats and then just mix and match them. Mix and mat them. How about that then? Right. I think that's all I want to tell you. Don't forget, Paul, at two o'clock. Uh, next Thursday, we're definitely going to ink and colour our dahlias, so be ready with that. Don't forget the sale starts tomorrow um, for all things essential and paper and pens. It's a paper and pen party, a paper and pen pencil party, okay? So we're doing that, and then other than that, I'm off to Gillingham to see me mum. Lots of love. Thanks, Stuart, for your help, and uh, yes, that was a dahlia to remember. Bye-bye now.